We are a, a NASA spinoff company. We actually started back in, in the late 70s, and we were written up in a periodical called spinoff that NASA puts out annually that uh, shows companies that have come as a direct result of the NASA space program. The reason I like to tell that is, I know you guys go to these things all the time, and a lot of them you just go to for continuing education credits, and a lot of them you go to to really get information and to move forward with things that you're working on. And uh, when you're out there, it seems like over the last five to 10 years, anybody who's read a book on energy efficiency has all of a sudden become some sort of an energy expert. And uh, so we like to tell a little bit about our background and where we come from and, and what we do because we feel like we've got some answers. They're not always the right answers. At NASA, we made a lot of mistakes too, as I'm sure everybody's acutely aware of. But we were very proud that they recognized us as a spinoff company. And what got us written up into this book we actually did a house back in, in 1980 and entered it into a national contest on energy efficiency. And uh, one of the four engineers that started our company, uh, and he was also one of the original four engineers that developed the heating and cooling systems for the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo space capsule programs. And the reason I like to tell this story is because people don't realize that, that outer space is the most hostile environment in the universe. So what happened, Dr. Busby, at that time we were actually stationed at Tullahoma, Tennessee, uh, before they actually transferred the wind tunnel testing facility down to Cape Kennedy, and Dr. Busby decided to, to build his own house, and his house was about 2,600 square feet of air conditioned and heated space in Tullahoma. And so Dr. Busby had just finished actually working on one of the shuttle projects. Now the shuttles are a lot larger, obviously, than the orig original capsules, in the actual cargo bay and the shuttle itself, you've got about 800 square feet of conditioned space compared to being literally having a couple of guys stuffed in a thermos bottle. But even on the shuttle with 800 square feet of conditioned space, when he did that system, it only utilized 1,200 watts of electricity a day to, uh, again, maintain 72 degree constant cabin temperature with those outside degrees. So Dr. Busby pulled up the manuals at the time. At that time, we were working on a sixth edition. We're now on, on uh, the eighth edition. And so what we found was that th there was nothing out there to really tell you what works and what doesn't work. All the programs out there, and we absolutely applaud Energy Star and LEED and the other programs that are available, but as, as Don was telling you, they're prescriptive programs. They say if you do this, 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 and this, boom, you get our stamp of approval. Well, what does that mean in the real world? It's like buying a car, and when you buy a car, it may have a sticker on it that says, you know, you should average between 34 miles to the gallon on the highway and 30 miles in town. Well, what does that really mean? It means how do you drive that car? That's what you're going to get. And so what we actually got more involved in was the how-to. How to properly insulate, how to properly caulk, how to properly install windows and, and mechanical systems and make them all work together in harmony so that you have a very, very good mechanical system. Anyway, the bottom line is with all these people out there today, you're going to hear a lot of information, and it's kind of like old Mark Twain used to say, it's not what we don't know that's going to get us in trouble, it's what we know for sure and it just ain't so. And a lot of what you hear a lot of times, is going to, it just ain't going to be so, I promise you.